Now, Dr. Oshupeng Masing is Senior Lecturer in Political Science and International Relations at the Northwest University and joins us now for a conversation on this. Thanks so much for your time this morning and welcome to Morning Live, Doctor. Good morning, Sakin, and good morning to us. Uh, though it's not a good morning to me, I'm not. I'm normally not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this, we we so appreciate you waking up to have this discussion with us. Uh, but Dr. Yeah. Masing, I want to start by just taking a look at the state of the province, the Northwest province, when it comes to service delivery, um, the political machinations, everything that's happening in that province at the moment. How would you characterize it? You know, uh, uh, I, I indicated uh, for several times that uh, Northwest is, is one of the most unstable provinces uh, politically. Because if you you would observe historically, this province has had uh, a lot of premiers uh, being brought through by the ANC time and time again. Now, I think there's, there's lack of continuity in terms of how things should run in government. That's, that's number one. And because of this lack of continuity and uh, the political instability that runs across uh, the province, uh, there, there becomes challenges of service delivery because of lack of this continuity and lack of a stable uh, kind of leadership in the province. Now, uh, 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 there, there remains and there has always been various challenges of service delivery in the province because of the instability as well as lack of continuity in terms of leadership. So, so if we look at the president's visit this past weekend, how would you characterize that? What was that about and what do you think it achieved ultimately? For for me, it did not achieve anything, and it's not going to achieve anything. Uh, what what I'm what I'm actually observing from my own personal point of view is that uh, we are towards uh, the elective conference of the ANC, and also at various provinces we are towards elective conferences of uh, the provincial leadership of the ANC. Now, I, I think the president is actually in a lobbying process for a second term. It's not something that is genuine that we want to listen to uh, challenges and issues that uh, uh, provinces would raise uh, amongst these uh, provincial runs and visits that he's doing. For me, it's not going to be any significant or it's not going to add any significant contribution towards service delivery. It's just a matter of a lip service that people were able to raise their frustrations uh, during the president's visit. But the reality remains that the reality remains that there are a lot of challenges that this province in particular still has to deal with. And as you go towards uh, an elective conference, things become much, much, much and extremely unstable in a sense that remember that you'll be having various factions or individuals trying to contest for the provincial leadership. Now, much focus will be based on a uh, contestation of the ANC leadership in order for those that would actually win to become those who actually lead the province ultimately. So uh, focus is going to be deviated from actually looking into issues of how we should run government properly, but focus will be much more based on contestation of the ANC provincial leadership and ultimately the ANC national leadership. So how then do you interpret, Dr. Masing, uh, the statement that says uh, this was a very positive interaction and um, that the leadership actually got to listen to the people's grievances? And they listened, but considering this against the backdrop, um, that the things that were raised, the issues that were raised, concerns by the public, are by no means new 
They spoke about the potholes. They spoke about the dark streets, water supply problems. We saw during the week Minister Figile Mbalula, the transport minister, addressing people who were complaining about the condition of uh, one of the uh, main roads in the province. Uh, but there were also mayors in that same gathering. What did they have to say, considering that some of these problems of service delivery can be placed directly at their doors? You see, uh, one thing is, is very frustrating. I, I, I would I would tell you personal Sakina that I, as, as as a resident of an, of the northwest myself, I, I face similar challenges of uh, challenges of of, of uh, lack of uh, water, challenges of potholes and so forth. Uh, 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 now, uh, for me, I do not think that uh, politicians actually have the capacity to can deliver. We also should consider what uh, officials that are appointed say and what, what is it that they are doing. We, we have the uh, municipal managers, for instance, uh, in, in, in various municipalities who are accounting officers of those particular municipalities. We, we have uh, your, your uh, head of departments who are accounting officers and actually have a responsibility uh, 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 in terms of legislation and uh, uh, public service uh, 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 imperative frameworks to can deliver services and plan in terms of taking the province forward. So I, I don't think that there is any impact in terms of having discussions, whereas there, there should be plans from the government level in terms of how do they deal with this. Things. For instance, uh, we, 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 we have at, at local government level what we call IDP forums, and these IDP, IDP forums are the ones that actually dictate plans in terms of where municipalities should go. Uh, in terms of delivering services to citizens. But I do not see where, uh, in fact, the implementation of uh, 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 such uh, IDPs. So IDPs more or less serve like the very platform that the, the president offered to citizens in terms of having discussions of challenges of service delivery and so forth. So we, we, we should actually look into what is it that our government officials are doing besides looking into politicians alone? Dr. Masing, the elephant in the room is, of course, while all of this is happening, it can be argued that it is the ANC's party political situation in the Northwest province that has actually led to this crippling state of service delivery. Um, do you know if, if, if this gave the president and the ASC of, and officials uh, an opportunity to deal with what could be the political root causes here? And also, what happened to the ministerial task team that was supposed to lead the Section 100 process? And what came out of that process? You know, we, we, Northwest has, faced, uh, has been placed under Section 100 for, for, for several times. This last uh, placement of Section 100 was not the first time. Now, it, it, it defeats sense that you, you keep on uh, having the province placed under administration, but you not actually realize where uh, this placement of administration in terms of uh, correcting things in the province is going. So I, I, I for, for, for one, do not actually see the purpose of placing this province under Section 100, and you do not actually see positive results over and above and beyond that. And then the performance of Bushi Mape, as uh, uh, he was uh, Job Mohoro's advisor at some point, only to replace Mohoro as the premier after Mohoro's removal. And, and how has that worked for the people of the Northwest uh, province? Has there been any improvement? Sakina, so, like I said, that uh, we have we have had uh, uh, premiers that come in and go out uh, over the years, and 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 uh, uh, mainly because of the political instability in the province. But there, there is nothing literally that I can literally claim and assert that uh, we have made progress as 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 the province. 
Uh, there's nothing that positively one can actually say. This is what the ANC leadership in terms of changing uh, premiers from one to another. We can claim as citizens, for instance, of the province that there has been positivity. There's nothing that is moving literally. And uh, just finally, uh, Dr. Masing, with regard to the significance of the ministers that accompanied President Ramaphosa, uh, including, of course, Police Minister Begi Kele, um, uh, Minister uh, Dlamini Zuma, Minister Sisulu. Uh, could we read anything into that at all? Uh, politically, maybe we, we might read something in, in a sense that uh, this is well what was uh, elective conferences of the ANC that it, it might be that uh, these are the people that uh, President Sir Ramaphosa might be looking into uh, working with them in, in terms of possibly uh, regaining power w within the ANC. So, so poss possibilities are those that those that might have accompanied uh, the president might be those that he, he will or he seeks to, to work with in terms of uh, regaining a second term within the ANC national leadership. Well, Dr. Maseng, thanks so much for your time this morning and thanks for waking up for us, Dr. Oshipeng <laughs> Maseng from the Northwest University, discussing the visit of President Cyril Ramaphosa to the Northwest province this weekend and also looking at uh, government and uh, the political situation in the Northwest provincial government uh, that has led to a uh, lack of service delivery and also as the ANC continues to be engrossed in internal fighting in the province, what could possibly be read into any of that?